Welcome back. The first anniversary of the deadly rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, was marked with a ceremony in honor of the victim. Somber music and compassionate speakers remember that dark day in Charlottesville on August 12, 2017, when white supremacists and other far-right demonstrators held a march. It soon turned violent when they clashed with counter-protesters. The city has been bracing itself to avoid a repeat of last year. The state governor even declared a state of emergency in advance as a precaution. A young woman was killed during the clashes when a car plowed into a group of counter-protesters. Her name was Heather Heyer, and her mother, Susan Bro, joins us now live from Charlottesville. Susan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's one year on since you lost your beautiful daughter. Can you tell us what you remember about that day? Um, for me, it was a punch. To the jaw it was the unexpected i had no no reason to think my daughter would be killed even if i had known she was at the protest that there would have been no reason for her to have been killed um i was completely floored heather, heather was there as part of the counter protests did she explain to you why she went to that rally and obviously you are living on in her memory and being her voice. Can you explain uh, your work that you've done since that time? Um, Heather was an adult, so I would not have asked what she was doing or why. I did find out she was with the peaceful protesters, um, but I understand that those who were on the front lines were also in a position of having to defend themselves. There was an actual assault on them. Um, having said that, um, as part of moving forward and uh, um, as a way to deal with the donations that were pouring in from across the world, we quickly formed the Heather Heyer Foundation. And that is a scholarship program primarily uh, designed to um, help in the education and training of those who are already activists in positive nonviolent uh, social change who wish to continue their education in a way that will help continue their work as activists. Um, I often say that I'm training Heather's replacement. We're also working on some youth programs to uh, let youth develop their own positive nonviolent social campaigns and have the adults help them. We're in the process of developing the legal frameworks for that now. So we're trying to move ahead as best we can to train the next generation of activists, advocates, and allies. And meanwhile, I'm traveling the country calling people to their own personal call to action. Um, Heather was not a leader. She was not in charge. She was barely even known to any in the activist community here. Yet her death, just by standing up with her friends, made a tremendous difference. And there's still a lot of work to do. Um, August 12th and 11th, were not the beginning nor the end of the civil rights battle, particularly in Charlottesville. Um, there's still a lot of work to do. We saw last year President Trump speak about the white supremacists and also make what sounded to be an excuse for them, saying that very fine people were amongst that mob. Today, he's sending out a tweet saying he condemns all racists. What's your message to President Trump? What should he do and what could he do going forward? Um, I've had the same advice for President Trump that I take for myself, that I taught to fourth graders when I taught school. That's a basic rule for living. Um, and I'm glad for his tweet today, by the way. Um, think before you speak. Always tell the truth. And be accountable for your actions. That is a, a good message. And obviously, uh, some white supremacists wanted to rally again this weekend in Charlottesville. They were denied the permit, so they're rallying in Washington, D.C. What do you say to them? It'll be interesting to see how D.C. deals with that. D.C. is not Charlottesville. And any final word about your daughter, Heather? How, uh, what you miss most, how you'd like her to be remembered? 
Heather would not want people to remember her. Heather would want people to remember the issues that she died for. She had a phrase that she, a motto that she adopted before she died, which was, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. So everyone needs to pay attention. They need to stand up and be counted. They need to get up off their seats and they need to fix things. They need to stop wringing their hands and going, gee, ain't that too bad. Let's get going. You're certainly now being her voice to continue that fight for equality. Susan Bro, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.